Nerds and welcome to Kubrick. This time I have something a bit different than usual. I will be showing you how my build process actually looks like. And as this project is going to take at least several weeks, I didn't want to leave you with no new content for too long. We will be taking a trip back to medieval times with my favorite LEGO theme, the castle. Now without further ado, I welcome you to the first chapter of Building the Siege of Bricks. You might have heard the title already, and that is because this mock will be made in a collaboration with my friend Edge of Bricks. If you haven't seen his channel yet, I strongly encourage you to do so. He's a very talented builder, focused mostly on building Star Wars mocks, so this one is a new direction for him as well. I will put a link to his channel in the video description so you can check out his awesome content. Now, back to the mock itself. The whole purpose of this collaboration is to show a battle between two factions. The newly added Crow Knights from the 20th minifigure series and the quite old but still great Lion Knights from the Fantasy Airline back in 2008. Both sides of the conflict have a band of brave and fearsome warriors accompanied by a heavy siege weapon. On the Crow side, built by Edge of Bricks, there will be a trebuchet attacking the city walls of the Lion Kingdom. You can see a detailed showcase video of the trebuchet on the Edge of Bricks channel, so there is not much to talk about here. The ballista is actually a fully operational siege weapon based on ancient Roman designs. The mechanism is relatively simple, but the challenge was to make it in a small scale so it would fit on the city walls. Just like the real life weapon, the mechanism is using two levers with torsion springs on both sides that are made from twisting Lego strings. This due to tension generated by the third string are able to throw projectiles placed on the ladder. The whole mechanism is made to closer resemble the real weapon as it could be operated by a minifigure. At the moment the projectiles can fly for about 1.5 meters, but this is still a working prototype so maybe I will be able to shoot them even further. Now that the theory is out of the way, let's see how the ballista actually works. Ok, now let's take a closer look at our heroes who will be defending the city. We have 4 of the king's most trusted warriors, each equipped with a different weapon to fit their individual fighting style. The soldiers are led by the general who can be recognized by a unique piece of armor and the most powerful sword in the kingdom. Second in line are melee troops who will be defending the walls if any of the enemy soldiers can breach them. We have 2 regular knights dressed in standard armor and wielding a heavy sword and a shield. And then we have two pikemen, each of them carrying a spear. Next in line are ranged troops, which at the moment consists of a crossbowman and two archers, but I plan to get a few more if I can get my hands on them in a reasonable price. Finally, let's move to the main focus of the build, that is how the city will actually look like. For starters, it won't be the whole city for sure. At the moment, I started building on one grey base plate and I think I will stick to that size to the end, but who knows. The city walls will be located on a rocky mountain which I already started building and the part that you can see will be the corner of the defense walls with a tower on which the ballista will be placed. I was thinking about a similar concept that scorpions were placed on the walls of King's Landing in the final season of Game of Thrones, that is on wooden platforms. Not only will they give me more space for the weapon itself, but also it just looked good. The lower part of the build will have a path going between the rocky terrain. I don't know how exactly will I utilize the path yet, but it will come as the building progresses. The whole setup is going to be winter with some small bits of snow here and there, to change the tone of what I usually build. This will actually be my first winter diorama, so it will give me some opportunity to test out new building and detailing techniques. And since we're talking about new stuff, of course some bricklink orders had to be made, so let's see what I got, shall we? 
purchase some watches and watch plays, which I never seem to get enough, and I would need those to finish the terrain. And a few brackets for the ballista. For the winter foliage I got some olive green plants, like these leaves and grass stems. And some more grass stems. Next are some white tiles for the snow. And some more olive green parts to give the ground some more detail along with some slopes and other small elements to put here and there. And here are some trans elements, both for icicles and some fire damage made by the enemy's artillery, but more of that in a future episode because I don't want to spoil too much. And since they were cheap, I also took some bright green leaves. I probably won't use them here, but plants are always something worth buying, right? And last, but definitely not least, I got these chocolate pieces in tan. I don't know if they will be included in this mark or not, but these are super useful for details, so who knows. And that's it, that concludes the first chapter of building the Siege of Bricks. These were mostly preparations for some more advanced building and planning the whole layout for the future. To sum up, as you could see the ballista is almost ready, just need a few small modifications. The army awaits for the walls to defend, the base plate was raised and the rock work made, and new parts were acquired so I can start some serious building. Now it's time to finish the terrain and to start building the wall and the tower itself. The next episode should be out in a couple of weeks as soon as I have something to show you, so stay tuned to the channel. How do you like what you see? Let me know down in the comments how do you like the build so far and if you want to see more videos like this on my channel in the future. Make sure to leave a like and check out my work on other platforms like Flickr, Instagram and Facebook which are all linked below. With that said, I hope to see you all next time on Cube Break.